We already saw in my last GT4 video that there is no evidence that the introduction of the 718 GT4 affected 981 values. More recent price developments seem to confirm this as there are large differences between the 981 and 718 when it comes to their price trends. What's up YouTube and welcome to a new video. Now I think it's fair to say that the introduction of the 718 GT4 didn't leave such a mark as the one of the 981 GT4. Yet some people expected a significant impact on 981 prices. And those prices came from a roller coaster ride but were fairly stable throughout 2019. Fast forwarding to 2021, we can see a lot of volatility in the used car market and the GT4 market is no exception to this. Prices moved in parallel for a while, but we can start to see price diversions in the GT4 market. In this video, I will show you how this price diversion looks and also how the price development compares to the Boxer Spider and the GTS 4.0. To kick things off, let's start with an overview of today's US market. Over here we have the model year versus price perspective and the graph is split between the 981 and 718 GT4s. A 981 has a median price of $109,000 and a 718 of $140,000. So this means that you need to pay a premium of $31,000 for a 718 GT4. And this means that for the price of a 718 you could get a 981 plus a daily driver. That's something to think about. Yet, we are of course comparing cars here with a different age and a different mileage. The 981s have a median mileage of 11,000 miles, whereas this is 2,200 miles for the 718. Interestingly though, both markets are very similar when it comes to the supply type. The 981 market consists completely out of used cars and there are only 3 new cars for sale in the 718 market. However, supply levels differ a bit. Especially 981s are rare as there are only 20 for sale while this is 54 for the 718. If we look then at the price variability, then we can see that you can pick up a 981 for just under $100,000, but that the most expensive car goes for $140,000. This car over here does then also have a very low mileage, but the price is quite steep. Yet, we can see the same kind of outliers in the 718 market. The cheapest 718s go for $120,000, while the most expensive ones are advertised for $170,000. Also this is a low mileage example, and also here I think that the price is a bit steep. And speaking about the mileage, let's have a look at the mileage to price relationship with the following graph before we have a look at the price trends. Over here we have now the mileage on the horizontal axis instead of the price. You can also see that I added the depreciation per thousand miles lines, and these show that momentarily, both cars lose on average 0.5% per thousand miles driven. And in absolute terms this means that the number is slightly lower for the 981 than that it is for the 718. And note that this is an average number that only holds when prices don't change. If prices go up, the full curve shifts up, which means that you lost nothing even though you added miles to the car. Now on top of this, if we look only at the 981s with a mileage higher than 10,000 miles, we can see that the mileage sensitivity almost completely disappeared. And that's quite something for a Porsche GT car. Alright, we are now up to date on today's market and that means that it's time to have a look at the price development over time. And we will do that with the following graph. Over here we can see the price trend between June 2019 and November 2021. Before we have a look at the most recent price change, let's first cover the historical trend. We already had a look at that in the previous GT4 video, but I will do a quick recap so that we're all on the same page. If we start with the 981, we can see that prices decreased with 3% between June 2019 and February 2021. Coincidentally, this was also the month in which the press release for the 718 GT4 was published. After this small drop, prices stabilized as we can see a drop of 1.8% between February and December of 2020. Yet, this price change is not statistically confirmed, which means that it can be the result of chance. And this price stabilization also marked the start for a change in the price trend. Since December 2020, prices have only increased, first with 6.3%, and later in the year with 4.2%. So this means an increase of 11% between December 2020 and August 2021. In this period there were also some large fluctuations in supply, which might help to explain these fluctuations in the prices, but more about that later. If we look then at the 718, then we can see that prices initially remained flat. They increased with 1%, but the increase is not statistically confirmed. However, just like 981 prices and basically all used car prices, 2021 marked the start of an upward price trend. Interestingly, GT4 prices increased initially slower than the rest of the market, as prices only increased with 2.8% in Q1 of this year. 
after this relatively modest increase, prices surged with 10.8%, making the GT4 quite an expensive car. Given the MSRP of $100,000 and some $20,000 to $30,000 on top of that for options, this price increase brought prices above MSRP. Another thing which we need to take into account here is that there was a stop sale for the GT4s, Boxer Spiders and GTSs. But all of that we will discuss later as we will first have a look at the most recent price change. We can see a clear flattening in the price trend. Prices still increased but they only did so with 2.3%. And this is perhaps not so surprising after the big increase which we saw earlier. And this is also in line with the rest of the car market. We saw some very big increases in the beginning of this year, but now we can start to see that price trends are flattening. I think though that the 981 didn't get that memo as the price trend accelerated. You can see that prices increased with 9.4% and that's significantly more than the increase in the 718 market. This also means that when we look at a longer period of let's say December 2020 till now, 981 prices increased more than 718 prices. It's 16 versus 21%. Yet, and this is interesting, the absolute premium which you pay for a 718 over a 981 didn't change. This was $30,000 and is now $31,000. So what's causing these differences in the price trends? Well, we can partially explain them by the differences in supply. So let's have a look at that. But before we do so, if you like this video, please support the channel by clicking on the like button down below. Thank you, it really helps a lot. You can by the way also follow me on Instagram if you like, it's at 4 I mainly post car market updates in my stories instead of photos. But now then, let's have a look at the market supply with the following graph. You can see that we have the market characteristics with the supply, median mileage and median model year development. Let's start with the 718. We can see that supply was initially quite low as the car was just introduced. Yet, it quickly increased as new cars were added to the market. But the supply of 111 cars didn't last very long. It rapidly dropped to 23 cars in April 2021. And this is probably related to the stop sale which Porsche announced in March of this year. They discovered that the connecting rods might crack and they had to fix this problem for the new cars and for the cars which were already sold. Consequently, no new cars were delivered and the ones which were ordered were delayed with 3 to 6 months. A viewer who owns a 718 GT4 which was affected by this issue reported 3 months ago that it was fixed by the end of August and that this might result in a supply increase. Not only because new cars might be hitting the market, but also because some owners gave up their allocation. And this is indeed exactly what we can see here. There were 27 cars for sale in August and 48 in today's market. And this supply increase is fully driven by an increase in the used market. In the new market supply only increased by two cars. Now on top of this issue with the connecting rod, we also need to remember that the price surge itself might have caused the supply increase. If you got your car for a reasonable price before the price surge, so before April, you could have driven it without losing anything. In fact, we can see that the median mileage is only 2000 miles and this means that you could have added 2000 miles and still benefited fully from the price increase. Moreover, the GT4 is more often than not a second car for many people. So you can easily sell it, wait till prices cool down if that's what you think they will do and buy something else at a later point. So to conclude, with winter coming up, prices at an all-time high and the connecting rod issue, it's not surprising to see a supply increase. This increase in turn also helps to explain the flattening in the price trend. Now if we look at the 981, then we can see that supply first increased from its all-time low. And this in turn matches with the price development, which flattened a bit in that period. More recently we can see again a drop from 40 to 20 cars, or 50%. And this is a serious decrease. It does then also match with the acceleration in the price trend. The 981 is simply very scarce at the moment. Now the prices which we looked at so far are asking prices. They're simply the only prices which are available in this quantity. Yet, they seem to paint an accurate picture of the development in the selling prices. Have a look at the auction results from Bring a Trailer. Data is relatively limited, but we can see that prices in general have been hovering between $75,000 and $100,000. They were the cheapest in the summer of 2020 and since then prices increased steadily. This trend direction is in line with what we saw in the asking prices. More recently, two cars were even sold above the $100,000 mark, something which has been a price limit for a long time. And this also means that they sold above their MSRP. Two data points is of course too little to base any conclusions on. 
but it seems to be in line with what we saw in the asking prices. All right, we saw now that GT4s are currently expensive, very expensive, but what are the alternatives? Well, under my previous GT4 video, many of you commented that you would like to see a comparison between the development in GT4 prices and Boxer Spider prices. Those spiders look so good and personally I also would be tempted to opt for a spider instead of a GT4. So let's do a quick price comparison between them. Over here we have now in blue the 718 GT4 and in orange the spider. You can see that I don't have the intermediate data points for the spider, so we can only compare prices at the beginning and the end of the period. And if we do that, we can see that the GT4 and the spider market moved in parallel. Spider prices increased with 16% between September 2020 and now, while this is 17% for the GT4. You can by the way also see that spiders are a tad more expensive. And this can first of all be explained by supply that is significantly lower, and second by the median mileage which is also a bit lower. So to sum it up, it seems to be so that Spider and GT4 prices move in a similar fashion. But now then, there is one more thing to consider here, the 4 liter GTS. If you think that the GT4 is too hardcore and prefer the coupe look, then this is a worthy alternative. Yet, prices in this market move completely different from the ones in the 718 GT4 market. Over here we have now the 718 GT4, the 718 GTS and the 981 GT4. And look at that. The GTS price trend is quite similar to the one of the 981 GT4. Between April and August, prices increased by 2%, whereas this is 12% between August and now. And with these increases, the total price increase is the same as the one in the 981 market. What's also interesting over here is the absolute price level and how this relates to the other cars. We saw that initially, prices were quite close to the 981 GT4. Yet, with the price increase during the last months, the gap to the 981 GT4 increased and the gap to the 718 GT4 decreased. I think that this makes the GTS look rather expensive. It all depends on your preferences, but with the GTS at $125,000, $110,000, 981 GT4 starts to look like great value for money. It by the way also means that at that price point, the GTS is priced quite far above the 911 991 Carrera S and the T. And with that, let's wrap up and conclude. We covered the GT4 market not too long ago, but I thought that these recent developments were interesting enough to devote a video to them. We saw that there is a divergence in the GT4 market. 718 prices seem to be flattening, while 981 prices accelerated. At the same time, we also saw that supply in the 718 market increased, while it decreased in the 981 market. With only 20 981s for sale, supply is close to its all-time low. And this could mean that the 981 is increasing in popularity. It will then also be interesting to follow these markets. Will the 981 price trend continue to increase, hereby further reducing the price gap to the 718? Or is the most recent price surge just noise and will we see a flattening of the trend like we saw in the 718 market? On top of this comes the introduction of the new GT4 RS, which might bring some interesting dynamics to this market. How many GT4 owners will trade up and hereby increase supply? To sum it up, there are loads of interesting things happening in the GT4 market and it will be interesting to see how prices unfold going forward. And with that we also arrive at the end of this video. Now if you like this data driven way of analyzing car markets but would have liked to see the analysis for a different car, let me know down in the comment section for which car you would like to see an analysis. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you get actually notified when your requested analysis goes live. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.